Illinois lost 59 lives to COVID today. That's the highest number of deaths in a single day in six months. And that's part of the reason we have new state-imposed restrictions announced today. It's Thursday evening. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Amber Kriska. Our teachers from kindergarten to college have been told to get vaccinated in the next two weeks. And the masks are now mandatory indoors. And that's all part of tonight's top story. And with those rising fatalities, we are digging deeper into the victims of this dangerous disease for a COVID composite of the first wave. In the spring of 2020, we were forced to rethink what vulnerable looked like. Coronavirus infection rapidly led to deaths. Between April 4th and the end of that year, Peoria County lost 144 lives, where COVID-19 was the primary or contributing factor to the end result. Virtually all of them had a pre-existing condition or comorbidity. High blood pressure or hypertension was by far number one already putting pressure on the body before the patient contracted COVID. All those systems work together um, for the basis of respiratory and breathing. It's not one singular um, event. So it's a, did COVID cause it or did COVID make it worse? The coroner got it, lost 14 pounds. His mom got it. He found encouraging her every day to keep eating high protein foods allowed her to recover. But 16 times a month in 2020, someone else in the county did not make it. Stats show the most common victim in phase one of COVID was an older woman, white, who already had hypertension and diabetes. And most often she was from Chillicothe. The top three county zip codes seeing more COVID-induced tragedies were Chillicothe, Peoria Heights, and Central Peoria. This, of course, was before the vaccine became more readily available, and the coroner is tracking fewer deaths now. I feel confident moving into um, flu season, pneumonia season, and things like that. Um, I don't think COVID's ever going away. I think this is something that we're going to have to learn to live with. Here's how it's changing. African Americans made up just 14% of COVID deaths in the first nine months. That has more than tripled of late, with 45% of the deaths in May, June, and the first half of July, equal to our white victims. Women were 58% of fatalities in phase one. COVID is now claiming men and women at the same 50-50 right now. And the low income, 61604 and 05 zip codes lead in fatalities now. The average age of a COVID victim in Peoria County has also dropped dramatically from 83 to 61 years old. To help overcrowded hospitals, Governor Pritzker said today he needed to do something and that something is mandating vaccines for Illinois school teachers and staff along with hospital and nursing home workers. If they don't get the shot, they have to get tested every week. Governor Pritzker says the surge of new COVID cases and hospitalizations is mainly within the unvaccinated half of the population. I'm sure that if people understood that being unvaccinated could take a hospital bed from an accident victim, they might go get vaccinated. Unfortunately, we are running out of time as our hospitals run out of beds. And three of Illinois' 11 regions are already in danger of not having enough ICU beds available for new patients. IDPH reporting that Region 5 in Southern Illinois only has 4% of its beds open as of yesterday. But the execution of this mandate could be tricky for local school districts. Bloomington District 87 Superintendent Barry Riley says he is worried about how they will verify vaccination status. I was a little surprised about the the timing of it being September 5th, that seems awfully quick. Hopefully this is not a massive undertaking, but it has potential for that if it's a manual process. If, on the other hand, it is a database that we can access, that will make things much better. Illinois Federation of Teachers President Dan Montgomery tells us the process for verification and testing could vary at a local level. While others wonder how they'll enforce the new mask mandate, East Peoria's mayor says he won't enforce it at all. Mayor John Call posted that to Facebook tonight, saying individual residents can decide what is best for themselves. He does add, though, that the people should be respectful of policies that private businesses put in place in regards to masking. But other places are still left wondering how they will enforce a mask mandate. Local health leaders say with such a recent announcement, they're essentially on standby, waiting for more detailed guidance from the state on how to enforce the new rules. 
As mask requirements go back in place, the CEO of the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council is now asking people to be patient with staffers whose job involves mask wearing. Respect the decisions and the requests of the business owners. We don't need to be adding additional stress uh, to what is already a stressful situation for anyone. He went on to say he has not yet heard back from local businesses on their reaction to this announcement.